Hello. Good morning. Well, you wanted a tour of the house. <laughs> so here we go. Oh when, dear. when the estate agent said it was rustic. R rustic? We thought it would at least have had a floor. <laughs> well, it's, I suppose you can walk on it. It's soil. It's not exactly polished tile though, is it? No. Uh, so, well, you asked for it. So, so here we go. Here's a tour of our house. Here we go. Welcome to our house. So this, you might recognise it, is our bathroom, which doubles up as a bed on the night, doesn't it? It does. So when we get in the <laughs> uh, we don't have any water and we don't have anything fixed in. So we kind of have a bit of a dusk bath. Uh, but this is the bath. Uh, right, move around, move around, move around. Uh, wheelie bin, we won't tell you what's in there, who's in, what's in there. Uh, this is the kitchen slash chamber pots so we have uh, one for liquids because it's yellow and the other one which you don't really want to look in uh, now i'm not an expert at building houses but i'm pretty sure that guttering and drain pipe should run outside and not inside anyway uh, yeah you don't want to see under the tab <laughs> uh, this uh, this is the closet this is my secret cupboard yeah you don't want to look in there no jokes about coming out of the closet, thank you. Um, this is the cage. And this is where I like to, uh, this is where Sean sleeps on a night sometimes because he's a bit of a sleepwalker. So we have to lock him in the cage so that he can't get out because he sleepwalks. You should hear him screaming all sorts of things about pastry and snakes. <laughs> not right, is it? Uh, so, welcome to our house. We're only joking, it's not really our house. <laughs> our house is nowhere near as luxurious as this. <laughs> now, it's just an old barn. But the reason we wanted to show you it is because we're hoping to transform it. It didn't work. Right, try again. We're hoping to transform it. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> The two biggest loves in my life, after this one, <laughs> are trains and radio. Yeah. And I've been lucky enough to work and play with both all my life. Worked in radio all my life and I worked on trains and played with trains. Yes, you in did. Fact, I used to have a train set from, oh, I don't know, as young as I can remember. I've always had a train set. Have you? Did I you did have when, a, I, when I was a boy, yeah. Did you? Yeah. I bet they were like really old trains though then, weren't they? Oh, oh. <laughs> we've got ends in here. Did you have a train set? I think most people had a train set, didn't they? Most people, yeah. I used to love mine because I had a class 101 DMU, which were quite new at the time. I mean, that's yeah. showing me age. And it was the same sort of train that used to pull into Castleford Railway Station, which is where I used to go train spotting. Really? Yeah, I used to be a train spotter when I were a kid. And when I weren't doing that, I was in my bedroom playing with myself, <laughs> with my trains. I used to be playing with my trains by myself. Did you have a little book? Yeah, yeah I did actually, because there used to be books, didn't there, with all the train numbers in. I think there probably still is. Strange. It's not strange at all. <laughs> You're strange. Don't stop. I'll tell you what, there's a group of people out there that'll have you. I know. They'll bet lynch you. Not Bet Lynch me. Bet Lynch you. I used world. to train spot actually. Uh, so yeah, and I had a train set all, all of my childhood really. And then when I was in my early twenties, I managed to get a job. I was a conductor, wasn't I? He was for Regional Railways North East and then Northern Rail as it as it was. As it is now. And I used to I used to work on on, on all the Northern lines like the Trans Pennine Express. So we go across to Liverpool and Manchester. I used to love the Manchester Airport runs because the line kind of went under the runway as they were coming into land. Does it really? And it kind of made my night if a, if a plane came over as we were going under. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, and over to the East Coast, it, it was brilliant. I used to love it. I don't think the chickens are going to be happy if we evict them from here, to be honest, because they like it in here, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they love it. When we had our last house, before we moved on to the boat, I tried building a model railway in the loft, do you remember? Oh, God, yes. We had a, a little three-bedroom bungalow, and there was just enough loft space if I crouched my head down and cricked my neck to walk up and down the centre of the loft. Yeah, more cuts and bruises on his head. <laughs> used to keep banging, used to keep hearing swear words as I kept banging my head on the joists. And I tried building a train set in there and I managed to build a frame and put the, the kind of wood on top and I actually got a little train set going. But the roof was very leaky 
especially around the chimney, wasn't it? Yes. And the insulation was yonks old. It was horrible. And there was so much dust and flies and stuff. And it all used to get in my throat and make me cough. And I was banging my head. It was horrible. And then in the summer, it was red hot. And in the winter, it was freezing and blowing a draft through there. And it just wasn't working, so I had to pack it in. And then when we got narrowboat Silver Fox, I would have loved one on there, but it was impossible. Yeah. And a lot of people came with ideas like, oh, well, why don't you build a track around the inside of the boat? But if you saw the boat, you'd understand that it, how unfeasible that is. Yeah. Because there's doors and windows and the galley and everything and the bathroom. You just wouldn't be able no. to do it. Yeah, that's right. And it was the same on outside. People saying, oh, we'll have one running around the roof. Well, we couldn't because we had the solar panels and the wiring and the gangplank. <coughs> gangplank and stuff like that and we couldn't do it around the gunnels because you have to use the gunnels to walk around yeah. it and the other option was uh, there's a couple of companies that do like train sets that fit inside a suitcase hmm. and they're all right if you like that sort of thing but it's not you don't get that buzz of be of creating a, a layout that yeah, you can expand on and, and make bigger it's a bit like I don't know, it's a bit like having a swing in the back garden and you really want to go to Alton Towers. God, yes, that's... Yeah. Isn't it? It's, it's that kind of thing. And they're very good for what they are, but it's just not what I wanted. No. And that's why it didn't work. If you remember the Dunrobin railway vlog we did a couple of weeks ago, you might remember towards the end of it, I got an idea in my head. Well, if the Duke can build his own railway, oh, why can't we? We could have like a garden railway, couldn't we, around the garden? But it's not really feasible because, well, for a few reasons. One, it's not level. There's so many hills. It's not all different levels. <laughs> so I know we could get round that, but it's just more engineering to do that. Yeah. And B, which is the most important, is that we just don't have the money, huh. uh, especially with things going the way they are at the moment with the cost of living and the, the energy prices. Yeah. We'd, we're having to save as much as we can just to, just to heat the house over the winter. So a garden railway is way out of, not just a little bit, but way out of our price league. So we've got to think of some other way. The plan, like I said at the beginning, is to transform, <laughs> did it right again, this barn into my big model railway, the train barn. The train barn. Oh, you wouldn't think there's already a YouTube channel set up ready, would you? Uh, <laughs> when you look around, you see lots of rubbish and bits of wood and plasterboard and stuff, and it all looks like rubbish, but I can utilise it all to start building a frame to sit the model railway on. Now, it's going to be double O gauge. Now, I know, I know there's like, and I know there's other gauges and, and you'll be telling me to do this, that and the other. The reason I'm going for double O is I've always liked double O. I've always had double O gauge. I like that. And I've already got quite a few trains and bits and pieces in double O. So it makes sense to stick with it. Yeah. I've got an Avanti West Coast Class 390 Pendolino. Sean bought me for Christmas this LNER Azuma Class 800. Everybody's got to have the Flying Scotsman. I've got a few steam locomotives as well that my kind of stepdaddish gave me. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> for my birthday. And we can't forget, of course, Silver Fox. We've got Silver Fox still. Uh, Class A4, designed by Nigel Gresley for LNER. The other question, well, not necessarily question, but you should do this, you should do that, is going to be <laughs> the theme of the layout. Because a lot of them have themes, don't they? They're like they built after certain goods yards or countries or things like that. Or towns. Or or... Ta yeah, that's it. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm not going to have one kind of theme. I want like I want a really fast like passenger line for my HST yes. trains. But then I want a line that's kind of a single line that's kind of windy with loads of trees and bridges. Countryside. And, yeah, like the far Village. north line, like the hmm. far north line up here. Then I want something like like a like a, a local. Uh, kind of branch line kind of thing for, for goods my, and stuff for, for my DMUs and then a big goods yard like the ones we used to live near in Yorkshire oh yes yeah just things like that and I want to kind of integrate that into one big layout I think that would be absolutely brilliant it's big enough isn't it? it is big enough and I think you could do that and integrate it into a brilliant layout yeah but how many bands have we converted <laughs> none <laughs> <laughs> we've watched an narrowboat being built <laughs> But we've never actually converted a bar. And it's not a full conversion we need to do. No. But as you can see, it's very bare. 
and it has got a few issues that we're going to need to address before we even start building a train set in here. So, I mean, if, if we go from one end of the barn to another, there's, there's a big damp patch. There's a couple of damp patches, especially in the joists. Speaking of the joists, one of the joists is actually missing. It looks like it's been eaten away by woodworm. Yeah. Uh, then there's other stuff. I mean, there's, there's a, a huge gap <laughs> around the door and the window, which we're going to need to seal. And then there's the floor. I mean, the floor is basically just dirt. It used to be a farmhouse floor, so it's just had animals in here. Yeah. But we've got to somehow dig it out, dig it out and level it off and, and maybe concrete. I don't know. We just don't know. And then, <laughs> the, and then there's the walls. I mean, the barn's about 140 years old and the walls are two feet thick. Yeah, easy. So that wasn't Sean farting, that was a chicken. <laughs> so it's like, do we line the walls? Or can we, I don't know, is it, do we need to line the walls and insulate them? On, I, no I think idea. we definitely need to put a, a lower ceiling in uh, because we need to stop the dust and everything falling onto the train set. So I think we definitely need a ceiling in here. If you've done this before and you're a dab hand at it, get in touch because we need your help. We, we need, need a worker. <laughs> we need to turn this drafty, dusty old barn into a less dusty, drafty barn. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything special. No, it's not going to be living conditions. No, as long as it's just dry and it keeps a certain amount of warmth, keeps the, the, the frost out and the cold and, yeah. and the wet, that's and the dust, that's all it yeah, needs, isn't it? it? Basic. Because we were even thinking about doing this kind of, like, a GoFundMe project. <sighs> where well, that's a good idea. I hadn't even told you about this, have I? I was thinking about it. <laughs> where we kind of we kind of do this GoFund project to get it done, and then in return for people supporting us, right. we we'll like name trains after people, and carriages, and stations, and <gasps> tunnels. Oh, and I good, say. With this, like everything in the, we could name everything after. We could even get little plaques with people's names on it. We could like station announcements, ladies and gentlemen. We will shortly be arriving at Carly Hairs. <laughs> you remember her. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next station stop will be Myra Butreeks. <laughs> the whole railway could be sponsored by people. Absolutely brilliant idea. Like, like our railway, our entire model railway, you could have your name somewhere on this model railway, even if it's just a tree. Yeah? Yeah, that would be ace, wouldn't it? It would. I like that. What do you reckon? I can hear you from here, you know, with your mouth full of bacon fries, Johnny. <laughs> He does. Lays there in his underpants, eating bacon fry. So That's not a sight you want. Saying, uh, how are you going to get time to do all this with the bees and the chickens and the radio station and the vlogs and, I don't know, the goofballs and moon pies and everything? I, I have no idea. Well, Sean does the chickens. He takes care of the chickens. And over the winter, the bees need virtually nothing. I've just got to keep my eye on them, but I don't actually do anything with the hives over the winter. So that's going to free up a day or so a week. Now, the vlogs, part of them, will be about the build of the barn. So it's actually not going to take any more time over the winter. It's kind no. of a winter project for us, yes. which I like the idea of. And we really do need your help. If you've got ideas on how to uh, change this into something less dusty and drafty, we don't need any kind of living conditions, nothing fancy. All it needs is a floor and to be dry and dust-free and not drafty. So if you've um, got a digger, <laughs> we need you. Yeah, if you can help in any way. And if you think the GoFundMe projects and, and kind of naming trains and things is a good idea, <laughs> let us know on that as well. Now, we do read every single comment. We yes, we do. We honestly do, because we click the heart button on every one we see. Uh, but because there's that many, we don't get a chance to actually answer them all anymore. But we do answer as many as we can. Uh, Hello, little chick. Hello. Oh. We have a visitor. <laughs> so leave your comments and your help and your tips and your advice and things like that. And whether you think the GoFundMe thing is a good idea in the comments and we will read them. What do you reckon? I Is it a bit like you, a goer? <laughs> Not anymore. I'm <laughs> past that. You are after a Baileys. <laughs> uh, we hope you've enjoyed this vlog and are as excited as I am. I'm kind of holding it back. It keeps weeing itself. <laughs> Hence all the buckets. If you've enjoyed this vlog, and we hope you have, and if you're excited about the project and can't wait to see what's happening, then subscribe to the channel yeah. and keep updated. Hit the thumbs up button, and if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video. I can't wait to get started on this. And I can't wait to get him out the house. <laughs> Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.